should pray. Thank you for the valley I walk through today. Thank you for every hill I climb, for every time the sun didn't shine. Thank you for every lonely night. I pray to you everything was all right. Thank you. shared with you the Christmas magazine that came out about how the, the, the missionaries was giving needles to the drug addicts, clean needles, they wouldn't get any more infection, and how that they'd be giving it the safe way for the prostitutes so they wouldn't get any diseases. And I, I shared with you when I thought about that, in the beginning I thought, this is crazy, but then when they used the scripture about legion that was full of the devils, remember that? And and uh, they didn't know what to do with him, so he was hurting himself, he was hurting his family, he was hurting the town folks, and they bound him up and set him outside the city, and I'm sure they took care of him. But I'm still fasting on this, and this is the point. When the healer came, yes. come on, yes. when the healer came, yes. Legion was set free. Oh, That's right. And you know what? There's a lot of us today needs the healer in our life. Amen? Yes. He is here today. Now, she, she has shared something else with me. I, I like listening to her because she says she's going to quit sharing these things with me. But I gotta share it, honey. It's right there. It's, just, it's here with me. You know, when you get something, you can't let it go. I just got to do it. And uh, I'm glad Will was not here for breaking because he says this little earpiece that she was talking to and telling me everything to say. That's his theory. But she said something, and this is what I want you to grab hold of as I go on this message this morning. Remember when they was out on the ship, the disciples in the ship of Jesus, and a great storm came, and Christ was asleep, and they were so afraid. They were going through a very hard time in their life and didn't know what to do, but Jesus was with them. Amen. You know what? Jesus is with us today when we're going through the trials and tribulations of life. But when Jesus came up, he told the winds to be still. He told the seas to be calm. And you know what? These men was amazed. You know what? There's some calmness coming to some of our lives today. Yes. Amen? Amen? Come on. And some calmness is coming. And we've got to begin to trust Him. Amen? So I have three questions I think today we must answer. In Matthew, if you want to read the whole chapter, the 27th chapter, the 15th through the... 26 verse, and I'll, I'll tell you what he's speaking about. I think I got a scripture up here. Uh, in Matthew 27 22, Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They, they'll say unto him, Let him be crucified. Well, we know the story that, 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 that Pilate can really find no fault in Christ, but the religious people wanted Jesus done away with. They're the ones that didn't want to know what to do with him. They couldn't understand what he was all about. I wonder sometimes if religious folks can't really understand who Jesus is. Amen. We get caught up in things that's going around us. So Pilate made a deal. He said, you can set Jesus free or you can set Barabbas free. And we know the story that they, they, they that the chief, that all the little religious people went around getting everybody to crap Barabbas. So Barabbas was set free and we know where Jesus was, that Jesus was crucified on the cross. So we often hear something new. Some people tend to tense up when they're faced with a test or when they're expected to answer a question. Today I want to look at three questions that Pilate asked the multitudes during the trial of Jesus. Pilate asked the people who were, that, who were there that day. The three questions still needs to be answered. And how you answer these questions could determine how and where you spend the rest of your life as well as eternity. I've got a question of desire. Now, in verse 21, and I don't know if they have that up there. I don't think she does, but I'm, I'm going to read it from, from the Amplified. Again, the governor said unto them, Which of the two do you wish me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. The context of the question, the question could be easily asked, What type of life do you want to live? Think about that. What kind of life 
do you want to live? Well, some people will say, I want to live a comfortable life, a happy life. And I want everything that I have desire to have. That's what I want. Some people will give a different answer. I just want to party. I want to be a party animal. I just want to have fun. There's all kinds of different answers that will come out. But my question is, what type of life do you want to live? When you're offered a choice between Jesus and any other alternative. Now think about that. When you're offered that choice, we, 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 we make those decisions every day in our life. We make choices of which way we're going to go. Am I going to follow Jesus or I'm going to follow the world? And you know what the sad part of it is? A lot of people tend to lean more towards the world than they do Jesus. And the sad part about that, Christians tend to lean a little bit towards the world because of worldly desires. And last week I, I talked about that, that we need to be responsible for the choices that we make and the things that we do in life. I, and I thought about that this week. And I thought about some of the choices I've made in my past. And before I was a Christian, I made some bad choices. How about you? Anybody ever made a bad choice? Yeah. yeah. And I did some crazy, and I'm going to just say the word right, I did some stupid things. Right. Not that I'm stupid, but I did stupid things. Well, I guess I was stupid to do stupid things, right? But I did, I did some things that was just, should have never done. Uh -huh. But I made that choice. And I was responsible for the choices that I made. Amen. I had an opportunity to have a scholarship in basketball and possibly a scholarship in baseball with high school. And baseball I was really good at, and basketball I was really good at. Back then, you didn't have to be so tall. We talked back in the late 60s and early 70s. I mean, the tallest guy on our team was six foot four, I think. And, but I made some stupid choices that kept me from getting a scholarship. Because my mind wasn't on my future. My mind was on having fun right now. And getting what I want at this moment. Well... I have to live with those choices yes. that I've made. Yes. Amen. So I guess keep asking yourself, what type of life do I want? And when there's a choice between Jesus and anything else, you got to make that choice. When you make it a choice, that will affect your everyday life. How you live your life. Yes. The things that you do in your life. If you decide not to pick Jesus, now here's something I see a lot of people like, they try to pick Jesus and the world. Have you ever noticed that? Uh -huh. I'm going to have a little bit of Jesus. I'm going to have a little bit of the world. And everything's going to be all right. Well, you just can't have a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of the world and everything's going to be all right. Either you have the world or you have Jesus. Amen? The scripture tells us you can't serve two masters. You love one and hate the other. So you've got to make a decision. Well, what, what kind of lifestyle? And I hear people complaining all the time. Constantly. I hear it a lot. I wish my life would be better. Well, your life can be better. But how can it be better? I've been in this shape all my life. Well, until you get out of that shape and change your life, it's never going to change anyway. There comes a time we've got to make good choices. Choices that's going to benefit us and everybody that is connected to us. And let me tell you something. If somebody comes in your life that's pulling you away from Jesus, getting them out of your life, they don't need to be there anyway. Amen? I believe there's room 
revival was coming. I've been talking about that. And it's coming, and it's coming soon. God's going to revive us, and we're going to begin to look to Him and, and look to Him for all the answers in our lives. So let's look at a life out of control. Have you ever seen anybody's life that's just totally out of control? In Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, for in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversations in time past in the lusts of the flesh, desire to, and fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were the nature of the children wrapped even as others. So when our life is out of control, we have a life of no peace. A life of no peace at all. There is no, in, in, in Isaiah 48, 22, the scripture says, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Right, right. Think about that. Something is missing. No peace. Right. No peace, no hope, no joy, no nothing. A life that's out of control. Wow. Now, I don't know what a life would be like with no peace, no happiness. I, I have a hard time with that. Because I've had Jesus in my life so long, and he's always given me peace and given me happiness and joy. Now, I've been through some tribulations, so I don't have a secret. If I had the secret, I, I, I would be all right, but I didn't have to go through no tribulations. But I found out, because I go through trials and tribulations, when I come through it, I'm a better man than what I was when I was going into it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I understand that even though Jesus is in me, the storms of life are still going to come. But when it gets so bad, he'll stand up and he'll call peace to everything. He'll calm my life down and bring peace and happiness back into my life. Why would he do that? Because he loves me and he cares for me. But when I go through those trials and tribulations, I'm learning how to trust him. I'm going to ask you a little bit later. She was going to beat me. But I'm going to ask you a little bit later to have a special prayer for her. She's got some testing she's got to go through this week, and I'm not going to, not going to go any farther than that, but we need prayer. Yeah. And we know that our God is able. Yes. Yes. And for the last week, the last month or so, we've been feeling this pain and this, this tension that's going on with that. But let me tell you something. We came to a point. We know who our healer is. We know who's in control. We know we might be going through it, but we know God is going to help us through it. Amen? And through this, through this, God will bring peace. But a life out of control has no peace. They have no joy. They might have a little pleasure sometime, but nothing that will last. Now see, I was never an alcoholic, so I don't know much about really getting drunk or anything like that. I just didn't mess with that stuff after about 17 years old. And I did a little bit of it when I was younger. But I can remember waking up with a worse headache and throwing up. I think I had fun. I'm not sure. But I think I did. I don't remember anything, but I think I had fun. And I, I asked myself one time, I said, this is stupid. I, I remember I was 16 years old, or 17, I don't remember. A friend of mine came up and he had a, a, a priest. I'm not advocating this, but let me share this with you. Because this had changed my mind too. He had a bottle of something or other. And so him and I sat in the car and we just began to drink it. It was Christmas morning. I don't remember nothing except me being thrown in the shower by my mother, turning the water on, and her beating me in my head. What are you doing? <laughs> now I'm telling you, I, I, and, and when I finally came to my senses, I didn't feel good. My bed had hurt. My head hurt. I had a lot of things she put right there. And when I came to my senses, I said, did I have fun? I don't think I had fun. Maybe for the moment. But nothing, nothing that laughed. But you know what? On Christmas, every morning I enjoy watching my, not every Christmas, every Christmas morning I enjoy watching the grandkids open the gift, me giving Sheila something. I'm enjoying it. I'm getting ready to eat some good food. We have a good time. We laugh. We have hope. You see, I have Christ now. That makes a difference. Amen? Yes. That makes a difference. Also, when a life is out of control, a life of condemnation, John 3, 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. God does hold man 
accountable. And they have a life of hopelessness. Nothing waiting for you but an eternity in hell. You see, churches don't want to talk about heaven and hell. They're talking about heaven. They talk about all the blessings. They don't want to talk about hell. And some churches don't even believe there is a hell. Well, let me tell you something. According to the Word of God, there is a hell. Either I'm going to go to heaven or I'm going to go to hell. I don't know about you. I'm flying high. Oh, I could go into a lot of that, but I'm going to move on. I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> but when I get my life out of control, I, everything's just messed up. It's kind of like last night. She was driving the golf cart. There's a picture of her. And I know they faked the picture, but I, she might have done it. I don't know later. Driving the golf cart right into a tree. <laughs> that would be out of control driving. And she always reminded me when we was at Disney World, we rented a, at Fort Williams, we rented a golf cart, and I ran into a, a post. <laughs> I didn't see the post. That was my story, and I'm sticking with it. I think it's just one of the posts that shot up, you know? <laughs> Out of control. But when you're in control, you just drive straight as an arrow, everything is good. When our life is like that, when our life is out of control, we hit everything. Nothing's really good. Nothing works. Our family doesn't work. Our finances doesn't work. We don't like anybody at church anymore. We find fault with this and we find fault with that because our life is out of control. We want to blame everybody for the situation that we're in instead of looking deep at ourselves and saying, why am I here? We, 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 we do everything we can to make us look better and find fault with everybody else. I'm here to tell you today, once again, you are responsible for your choices. The choices that you make, you are responsible for them. Okay, I'm leaving today. Yes. But a life of salvation is in the blessings of God. The lifestyle of a person who chooses God is a life that is under control. Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Yes. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? I know what the world thinks spirits are. But when I'm walking in the Spirit of God, that means I know that Jesus is guiding everything Amen. in my life. Amen. I'm trusting Him for everything in my life. Yes. I'm not looking at nobody else, but I'm looking to Him to trust me, to, to help me. So I'm walking in the Spirit, and I'm not worried about the desires of this world. Amen. I'm more concerned about pleasing Him. And I found out when I try to please Him, He pleases me. You know, somebody said to me one time, said, I, I get to the point, I get tired of me always giving and giving. What about me? And I found out a long time, the more I give, more, more comes back to me. Amen? It's according to how I'm looking at it. If I'm looking at it in the right eyes, it's always, I'm always being blessed. I can never outgive what God can get back to me. Yes. Amen. And you can't either. Amen. A life of peace, total contentment is found in Jesus. A life of absolute joy. Not perfection, but contentment. Because I'm satisfied. I'm happy in where I'm at today. Amen. A life free from condemnation. In other words, in other words sin for the believers has been done away with. And I, I know that somebody might come and say, well, you're not perfect. No, I'm not perfect, especially in somebody else's eyes. But because Jesus lives me, in me, in his eyes I am. Thank you, now think about it. In his eyes, I am. If I begin to mess up, he just taps me on my shoulder and says, get back in line, young man. And I'll get back in line. Why? Because God is there to guide me and direct me. And I'm not having to worry about I used to worry about if I combed my hair wrong, I was sinning. If I put a ring on my finger, I was sinning. If my mustache got too long or my hair got too long, I had sinned. If my pants wasn't the right color, I had sinned. But I come to find out it's got nothing to do with my hair. It's got nothing to do with a, a jewelry on or the color of my clothes. What it does is it, what it happens. What, what oh, get it right here. Man. I got to talk to this folks. Wow. What I found out is the content of my heart is what matters. If this is right, everything else is going to be good. Wow. So when I realize that everything else is good in my life, Wow, I'm free. So I have that life of hope. And I know there's a better place waiting on me. Praise the Lord.
somebody might say, well, how do you know? You ever been to heaven and back? No. But spiritually I know. Amen. Because Jesus that lives in me, he has. Think about that. There's two places in the scripture that the word breath is used. It's only used that way in these two times. Breath is used in many different, many different forms, but it's only used this way. When God breathed upon Adam and said, receive life. He became a living creature. Yes. God put the breath of life in him. When Jesus appeared to the disciples and he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, he put the breath of life into them. I had the breath of life living in me, telling me that I got hope. Amen. How about you? I got hope. And heaven is going to be my home one day. I'm telling you, I'm waiting on that ride. I'm ready to go. I mean, when he's ready for me to go. You know how that goes, don't uh -huh. you? You know how that goes. But I want to, I, I have that hope. I was talking to someone, I'll be doing a funeral this Friday of a brother that, she lost a brother, and we were talking about salvation, and she said he had made peace with God at the, at the latter days of his life. And that between him and God, everything was okay. But a question was asked me, how do we know? I said, we know because Jesus told us so. Yes. Amen? Yes. And the apostle Paul said to be absent in this flesh is to be in the very presence of God. Amen. And I know that at the time I take my last breath here on this earth, I don't know what kind of breath it's going to be in heaven, but it's going to be a glorious thing. Amen? Amen. I'll be with Jesus. And I know there's all these different questions and all these other things that come out, different theories, and that's okay, and I don't understand it all, but I do do one thing. The Bible says the absent in the flesh is to be in the presence of God. So I plan to be in His presence wherever I'm at. Amen? How about you? So the, the second question was, and I will hurry because these are short questions here. Question of destiny. What you do with Jesus determine where you spend eternity. Once again, the choice is absolutely and totally yours. To refuse Jesus is to be lost and doomed to hell. There we go again. To receive Jesus is to be saved and headed to heaven. My question here is, where do you want to spend eternity? Yes. Simple question. Where do you want to spend eternity? Do I want to spend it in heaven? Or do I want to spend it in hell? I gotta ask a important question. All this say, it, lift your hand if you will. Thank you, Lord. Let me ask you this question. How do you know? How do you know that you're saved? Because I come down to the altar and I said a few words. And I got up. How do you know? Let me tell you how I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Now, I've played the game of going down to the altar many times and asking God in my life and didn't mean it. Three days later, I forgot who he, was, who he was. But when Jesus truly came into my life, when I truly, listen folks, when I truly opened the door of my life and Jesus came in, my life changed. That's right. My life changed. Yes, yes. Gary always says my want to changes. He, I didn't want to do those things anymore. Uh -huh. But I began to walk a new walk. I began to talk a new talk. I became a brand new person because the scripture says, Behold, old things are passed away and all things become new. Uh -huh. that's it. And some of you might say, Well, that's hard to do. Well, back when I did it, it was hard to do because no matter what I did, I was still sinning. That's right. I mean, but today, let me tell you this, if you truly invite Jesus into your life, you're not going to worry about what anybody else says. That's right. You'll know that you know because His Spirit, and somebody said Spirit a moment ago, will let you know that everything is all right. But I will say this, there's too many people that go to church that plays church. Come on, come on. Oh, I'm getting trouble, but that's all right. I'm old enough, it doesn't matter anymore anyway. <laughs> I'm just getting there. But you got to speak it today. Because if your life is messed up, 
You can't find peace and happiness. You really need to find out who you're serving. Because God will bring peace and happiness even in the worst situation. Like I said, the last month or month and a half, she's not been going through a lot. Our minds have been here and our minds have been there, but God has brought peace. You know why God brought peace? Because we know who, who, who brings peace, and His name is Jesus. Amen? He's in our lives. He's guiding us. He's directing us in all things. So today, ask yourself a question. If I took my last breath right now, where would I be? Think about it. Where would I be? And I found out it's not hard to serve Jesus either. Amen. It used to be hard, but it's not hard no more. <laughs> I, told, I, told someone to, I told someone to be comfortable in my shoes. I found out serving Jesus was not hard at all. Now, I'm not beating anybody up, but what I'm just saying is I found out that relationship is between him and me. Yes. What convicts you might not convict me. And what convicts me? How it goes back and forth? We got to know. So ask the question. And the final question, the question of decision. And here's a question that maybe you might really need to ask yourself. What bad thing did Jesus do to you that caused you to tell him no? Can I read that again? Yes. What bad thing did Jesus do to you or to me that would cause us to tell him no? He loves you. He died for you. He longs to be with you. He calls you to come to him. And Christians, let me say this today. What has Jesus, Jesus done to you that caused you to walk away from Him? What He did to you, He saved you when you deserved hell. Hmm. You see, when I look back on my life and look where I come from, my family was a nobody's, poor as poor could be, had absolutely nothing. And when I tell you that we walked to, walk to schools with holes in our shoes, with cardboard stuck in, I'm telling you that's what we did. We had hand-me-down clothes and we were glad to get them. We didn't have the money to go shopping like we could today. At Christmas time, we didn't have enough money to buy all the stuff that goes on your tree, so we just took popcorn and, and made popcorn garland and stuff like that. Some of you might remember some of that. We all got one gift maybe at Christmas time and sometimes it was just candy. We were poor. We were nobody in the scheme of things. But in God's eyes, Amen. come on, in God's eyes, we was precious in His sight. Amen. He loved us so much that He died on the cross. See, it's not about the wealth. It's not about what you have or what you don't have. It's about the relationship you have with Him. Yeah. Some people say, well, if I could just get out of this mess that I'm in today, if I could just change my lifestyle, change it today, you can make that choice to change it today, get rid of the junk of the past, and begin to move forward with the blessings of God. Amen? Because let me tell you something. You are somebody. God did not create you to live down here. He created you to live on the mountain. Amen? You're smart people. Well, I don't know if I'm smart people. We all smart yeah, I, that's what I meant. Yeah, we're, we're intelligent people. Yeah. And God's got it for us. All we got to do is receive. Amen. So what my question is, why would I want to live in the valley, live in depression, live without? And the sad part is a lot of Christians do that today. Uh -huh. My favorite statement that God gave me a long time ago is, live in the past, take no faith. Because I already understand it. But to live in the future means i got to step out and have faith. Amen? Yes. And I, 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 I'm going to step out and have more faith in the things that God can do for me. I'm not living there no more. That, that has nothing for me. But God's got everything for me. Yes. So I want to make that right decision. God, the best thing God done for me was when Jesus died on the cross that I have life today. Thank you, Lord. It's sad he had to suffer and go through that. But he did it for me. Yes. And he did it for you. And he gave you a brain full of intelligence to use it for his glory. Amen? Wow. And he wants you to be happy. He wants you to achieve. 
And listen, there's nothing with the help of God that we cannot accomplish. Amen? Yes, wow. In other words, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying you can have your financial needs taken care of. You can leave that depressed state. Your marriages can grow stronger. Your family relationship can get better. A lot of things can happen in your life as long as God is guiding and directing your life. Amen? Amen. He blessed us. There's nothing impossible for God. Well, just like the crowd 2,000 years ago, we must answer the same three questions. Don't you want the best life you can have and the best eternity you can have? Because you either have one or the other. Heaven or hell? Your decision. Remember last week we, we showed a video about Jesse the Plantis who was on the airplane? And he said he was sitting beside an atheist and he was praying or something, plane got hit by lightning or something happened. And Jesse opened up his Bible and he looked at him and said, So you're a preacher? And Jesse said, Well, yeah. And he had this hustler magazine. He said, What do you think about that? And Jesse took the Bible and said, What do you think about that? And he, he said, Well, I don't believe in God. He said, That's your business. But he said this. He said, When the plane took a dive, he said, That atheist said, Oh, God. <laughs> he said, Oh, God. Now think about it. I'm wondering how many atheists, atheists is really out there when bad things happen in life. But you know what? God is able to help us. So we have a decision to make. Who do we serve? Are we going to serve the world? The things in this world? I know we live in this world. But we're not of this world. Amen. That's kind of hard to understand because we live here, but yet we're not. In other words, we're born again believers. We're Christians. We live in a world. But we can enjoy the blessings that God has for us in this world. But we don't act like this world. Last night we gave out a lot of candy and I was talking to James and I said a lot of people want to take this day and make it a bad day. They want to, they want to find something wrong with it. And I said, you know what? For most kids, and I said, I know you got some crazies out there, but for most kids and even for us adults, it's about candy and hot dogs. And it is. It's about candy. Those kids last night came and looked in there and they, if I didn't give them what they want, they want to take their own. It's about candy. They want candy. So what we want to do is take it and take everything the world is trying to make bad, we're going to make it good. Amen? Yeah. Everything the devil says is evil, we're going to turn that thing around and we're going to say it's good. When God created this earth, he, it was good. But when he, when he created man, he said he was very pleased. It was very good. You know what? When he created you, he made something very special. Amen? Amen? So enjoy the blessings that he has. There is a cry out today. And it cries this. Who do you choose? Barabbas, so to speak? Or do you choose Jesus? I don't know about you, but I choose Jesus. Because I know he's never failed me. And he's never let me down. Could you stand with me? I know I used this scenario a few times, but I haven't used it in a long time. I want to share it with you again. The Lord just laying it on my heart this morning. Paul Harvey told a story. I mean, remember Paul Harvey? Yes. He told a story about a preacher that was headed to his church early Sunday morning. He was downtown as he was walking past all the buildings. When he passed the buildings, like little alleyways that was between the buildings. As he was walking along and all of a sudden he looked down one out of the way and he seen this little boy carry something quite large. He said he just stood there and he just waited because his curiosity was aroused and he wanted to know what this little man was carrying. The closer he got, he noticed he had a cage. So he said, I think we'll just wait and see what he's got there. So as he got really close, the preacher had noticed that he had a cage with a bird in it. And when the little boy got to him, the preacher looked at him and said, Son, what do you have here? He said, I just have this old cage that I found. And he said, I trapped this old bird and I put it inside of it. And the preacher knelt down and put his hand there and tried to pet the bird. And the bird just pecked him on the finger and he moved his hand back real quick. And he looked at the little boy and said, What are you going to do with this bird cage and this bird? He said, Well, I'm going to play with him and torment him for a while. But he said, Then I'm just going to destroy it. And the preacher looked at the little boy and he said, how much you want for it? And the little boy looked at the preacher and he said, you know what, it's not worth anything. 
It's just an old bird, an old cage. And the preacher said, how much money do you want for this? And the little boy's eyes got big. He said, $5. And the preacher said, so to be. Gave him five bucks. The preacher opened the door and kept, kept patting on the side and finally the little bird finally jumped out and flew away. He destroyed that cage so it could never be used again. But as Paul Harvey would always say now, the rest of the story. And let me give you the rest of the story. One day Jesus was walking down the road. And he came to a crossroad. As he got at the crossroad, he looked down the crossroad and he seen Lucifer coming. And he noticed that he had something in his hand. So Jesus just stood there and he waited. As he got closer, he noticed that Lucifer was carrying a, a cage. And he sat there and he just waited and noticed also inside that cage was a man. So Jesus just stood there. The devil got to him and he said, Lucifer, what do you have there? He said, I have this old cage. He said, I have this old drunk. So druggy in it. And Jesus looked at him and said, what are you going to do with him? He said, I'm going to torment him for a little while and I'm just going to kill him. And Jesus reached down and tried to calm this man that was inside the cage and he spit at him and cursed him. And Jesus looked at the devil and he said, what do you want for him? And the devil looked back at Jesus and said, I told you he's no good. He's just an old drunk. I just set a trap. He's no good for anybody. And Jesus said, what do you want for him? And the devil's eyes got big. And he looked at Jesus and he said, every ounce of your blood. And Jesus said, so be it. Jesus reached down and pulled that drunk out of that cage and destroyed that cage never to be used again. And Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross every ounce of his blood for you and I today. Some of us might be at a crossroad. Some of us might be allowing the devil to play with our minds and play with us. But you know what? Jesus has already paid the price. Amen? He paid the price for us. So then you get to sing that song. How many of you would just come to this altar this morning with me? Well, I know most of us in here are Christians, and that's okay, but just come and talk to Jesus. And how many today need you prayer? Because I'd like to lay hands on you and pray for you today. I want to give you that opportunity to come right now. Just come. Come on, folks. We're home folks around here. Just come. Come and talk to the Lord. Because I know He's got something for you today. I know He wants to help you today. You know what? I mean, he's decided to follow Jesus. Amen? Yes. He's the one. Yes. Come on.